So this is the device that I just sort of dropped <laughs> down for you at the end of the last video. Uh, it has a lot of moving parts, and so I want to walk through those moving parts together and see if we can understand the process and algorithm that we're going to use to uh, produce a multiplication result based on numbers that we're going to give. So we're going to start with the uh, adder that's in the middle here. This adder is going to take two numbers together and add the results. What numbers are we going to add? Well, first we're going to take one result, one number here, which is the multiplicand. And that number is going to be added to, or not added to, the, the partial product as we go. So this is going to be the partial product. Oops, partial product. And each time we go through this algorithm, we're going to take the result from the partial product, we're going to feed it back into the adder, and then add the result from the multiplicand. And we're going to have to decide whether or not we're going to add. That's going to be whether the uh, multiplier is 0 or 1. This here is going to be the multiplier. And you notice we're only paying attention to the bottom bit of the multiplier. We're going to put that in as a piece of control information that's going to tell the control logic whether or not we want to add the multiplicand in this stage. And then we're going to shift, we're going to move that result around and we're going to shift the partial product around as well. So we're going to tell the partial product to, to load or shift. Oh, sorry, we're going to shift the multiplicand, not the partial product. So we're going to shift the multiplicand around so that we add it to the right end bits of the uh, partial product. And the multi multiplier is only used for control. So there's a lot going on here. Um, let's look at this conceptually. Uh, see if there's a better way to do this. I guess not. Let's look conceptually at what we're doing with a flow chart of all of this as well. So here's a flow chart for the way that this hardware is going to function. This is not software. This is hardware, right? The machine is going to do this in hardware. So the way this is going to function is we're going to start by initializing our registers to have the values that we're interested in. Where these values come from, how we put them in the registers, we'll, we'll hand wave that for a minute. When we build our general purpose computer, this will be important. Where did the information come from? But let's assume that register R is going to have our multiplicand, and register Q is going to have our multiplier, and register P, which will hold our partial products, will initialize to zero. Somewhere in the control logic, we're going to need a counter, and we're going to initialize that counter to the size of the numbers we're multiplying, because we want to do this for every bit in the multiplier, one bit at a time. Okay, So we're going to initialize the counter to the length of the multiplier, which is Q. Uh, we could do this with different sizes of multiple cans and multipliers. That would be okay. For simplicity, we'll keep them the same size. Then we will check the least significant bit of Q. That's the first bit in our process here. We check the least significant bit of Q and we say, is this a zero or a one? If it's a one, we're going to add the multiple can. If it's a zero, we're not going to add the multiple can. So that's our first step. Is the least significant bit of Q a zero or a one? If it's a one, we're going to add our multiplicand to our current value of our partial product. So our partial product starts at zero. And so if the multiplicand, sorry, if the multiplier has a bit of one there, we're going to add that multiplicand to the partial product. If it's zero, we're going to skip that addition process. But either way, the next step is the same. After we've added or not added, in other words, if we've multiplied it by zero or one, then we're going to shift things around so that the next time we come through this, we're adding the number in the right place of the partial product and we're paying attention to the right bit of the multiplicand, multiplier. Pfft. We're looking at the multiplier bit by bit. So we're going, to we're going to shift the multiplier around so that the least significant bit now is paying attention to the next bit. So we're going to shift the, the multiplier to the right to get rid of the bit we just used and then look at the next bit. Then we're going to shift the, um, the multiplicand to the left so that it's adding into the next slice of the partial product. And then we're going to decrement the count by one so that we know that we've done this once. And then we're going to say, are we done? Have we finished the count? If not, then we go back and do this again. We check the least significant bit. We add the partial product to the multiplicand if the least significant bit is one. If not, we don't. Then we shift the multiplier, we shift the partial product, and we carry on. 
I'm sorry, we're shifting the multiple can, not the partial product. You'll see why I keep saying that we shift the partial product because there's an optimization to this algorithm a little later on, and we'll see. So we shift the multiple can, we shift the multiplier, we keep sort of shifting them back into each other so that we're looking at the next bit of the multiplier and we're, sh we're adding the multiple can in the right slot of the partial product. And we carry on bit by bit and we go. Um, oh, look, I have an animation. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay, so here's an example step by step. We're going to list the contents of these three registers, right? And what is R? The R is the multiplicand. Q is the multiplier. And P is the partial product, which is where our result is going to go. So we're going to start with our multiple, uh, same example, 14 times 10. We're going to start with our multiple cand in the ones bit, ones position, right? And each time we shift it, we're basically multiplying it by two. So we add it to the ones position, the, ten, the twos position, the fours position, and on like that. And each time we do that, we're also looking at the next bit of the multiplier. So we're going to start in the ones position. We're going to check the ones position of the multiplier, and we're going to not add because a zero means we don't add. And then we're going to shift things around. Now we're looking at the twos position. So this is like the ones position and the one here. And now we're looking at the twos position and we look at the twos. The twos say we do need to add in this location. And so we take that, we add that to the partial product. Now the partial product has some value. Then we look at the fours position and the fours value of that multiplicand, four times that multiplicand. And then we don't add, but we also shift. So we're always shifting. Sometimes we add, sometimes we don't. Then we look at the eights. And the eights says, yes, we do add it. And then we add the eights result to the current value of the partial product to get to the next value of the partial product. So we take this partial product, we add it to the eights value, and we get our final result. And, our, and then we do it again because we keep going until the count says stop. So we're going to do our shifting. The count says zero, so we're done. Okay, so we're shifting uh, through the multiplier to check each bit of the multiplier as we go, and we're shifting the multiplicand to multiply it by 2, 4, 8, and 16, etc. That's how we actually do the multiplication, is that shift is a multiplication by 2, by 4, by 8, and depending on whether we add those or don't add those, <clears throat> we can get a multiplication by any value. So that's exciting. So that's the general process of this um, flowchart, and now I have to go to this animation again, um, and this example. <clears throat> so we're, the control logic is one thing that I didn't actually, how do I, there we go. Um, the control logic in here, we didn't build out, right? We know how to build a register, we know how to build an adder, we know how to build more registers, all of this kind of stuff we can build out but we have not built out the control logic and the counter. We'll have to think carefully about what will go in there and how to build it. There's a counter, which we set to a value and then we count down. There are inputs to the control logic, which is this bit of the multiplier that we're gonna use. And then there's outputs, which tells us whether or not we're gonna add and how to store the new value of the partial product. So all of that stuff is gonna be within the control logic and we have the theory behind how to build out control logic for something like this. Uh, we're not going to put it together. We're just going to assume that we can put it together. Um, but that's what our next step will be, right? We're going to need a counter that can decide when we're done. We're going to store P, Q, and R in shift registers. And then we'll need some other logic to control the circuit. This control logic is going to be running in, opposite, in opposition to the functionality of the device. What do I mean by that? Well, the control logic part of the circuit will run on the opposite clock phase. So it will receive feedback from the circuit. It will decide what to do next. It'll send control information out to the rest of the circuit. All of that stuff is a complete sequential circuit. But we can't have that happening at the same time as the main circuit because then the control logic will provide information to the circuit how to change at the same time the circuit's trying to change. So we put them out of phase. We have the control logic happening maybe at the rising edge of the clock and the actual machine, the registers taking new value at the falling edge of the clock. Okay, This is a general design principle for control logic that controls a more general purpose machine like a computer, and we'll see that as we go, is we um, have control logic that runs on one phase of the clock 
and then we have the actual logic that, that moves data around running on the other phase of the clock. <clears throat> In the next video, I will show you a slightly optimized version of this machine uh, that doesn't, that recognizes that these shifts don't necessarily have to be all uh, opposing and, and, and waste a lot of space. You'll see.